Hey friends, it's Thursday, which means it's Thursday Thoughts. I was gonna take you with me when I went for a walk with my dog, but it is pouring down rain. Even the dog didn't wanna go out today. So we're in my kitchen and I'm just preparing a snack. Wanted to share a few things that I've been thinking about in the last couple of days. If you follow Catch the Fire Worship Flags and you saw our last email, you know that we're celebrating my husband's baptism after 26 years of marriage. And it was really, really exciting moment and uh, a lot of you celebrated with me thanks for all your well wishes and your celebrations and your comments i read them all i just love it i shared them with my husband as well but one thing that i was thinking about was the road to mace versus the road to damascus we talk about conversion stories and we really like the road to damascus story uh, where paul saw at the time meets jesus blinding light and he has just an encounter with Jesus that he can't deny and he lives at, as passionately and zealously as he did prior to being uh, a zealot and a, a Pharisee. Sometimes I think that in the church we do the error. There's a problem with us emulating or idolating, is that a word, idolating? That, that kind of conversion where it's like a suddenly. And uh, that's not my husband's story. And I was thinking about, after the, at the road to Emmaus, when the two disciples were walking back to Jerusalem after all of the events and Jesus had died, and they were walking, discussing it together, and they had been walking quite a ways with Jesus and asking him questions, him asking questions, having a conversation, getting to know who, hey, this guy, maybe he, he did know what he was talking about because he was explaining all of the scriptures pertaining to himself. And then as they kind of got to their destination, they realized their hearts burned within them and they realized that they had been walking with Jesus all this time. If you know my story, probably a lot of you don't because I don't share it very publicly often. I share a lot of things, but uh, with my husband's story, that's generally been his story. But we've been married for 26 years, almost 27. We've been together just over 27 years. And at the beginning, yeah, he wasn't a believer. And then I really, that really bothered me, especially in the early years of our marriages. I was kind of moving passionately towards Jesus. Uh, my husband was staying the same. We're actually moving opposite. And that bothered me. And I felt like the Lord early on in about 2011, actually at the beginning of 2011, Jesus I felt Holy Spirit say to me that he, that this was his year, that this was his year, 2011. I'm like, great. Like I felt peace about that. Um, but over the course of the year, I didn't see any kind of evidence of, of him doing that, of, of move, making a move. And it was getting to be like October and it was getting to be um, the end of October. And I was at a conference and, and I was like, what about this Lord? I haven't seen any, I have not seen any movement in terms of his heart to foster towards the Lord. And a speaker at that conference, one of the a well-known prophet voice in today's culture, he actually prophesied over me and he gave me a word and he talked about how my husband and I would be have one heart. I'm like, okay, that was like a, that was a confirmation for my heart. Uh, and then but again, nothing. I didn't see anything. And then at the end of the year, coming up to coming up to the um, end of the year and I'm like okay Lord what what's going on because I do not see anything of what's happening and I felt the father say to my heart his heart meaning my husband his heart is mine and I completely eased into it I'm like okay, I am going to believe you. I'm going to believe this word. And I stopped praying for his salvation. And instead I started to really fervently pray Ephesians 1, 17 to 18, that the eyes of his heart would be opened so that he would know the hope of his calling. And it wasn't, and I realized at that point, actually I've been contemplating road to Emmaus versus road to Damascus conversions ever since then, because it's been a slow progress. It's been a slow road. I don't do anything slowly, but my husband is methodical and he's the one that makes sure that we have everything. You know, he counts the cost and I'm like, hey, let's let's ride at midnight. And he's like, hey, do we even have horses? He's that kind of guy. So he, when I, I watched this 
this progression over the years, and now we're two, two, 2023. He was actually baptized the first Sunday or January 8th on 2023. And it was an incredible celebration because this was the fulfillment of all of it. And, but even at, at when we had people over back to the house, he's like, well, what, when was that moment that you, like basically we're asking, what was your Damascus road moment? And I think that as Christians, we need to step back and not keep asking that question. Um, we need to know when did you realize that you'd been walking with Jesus? Because I think that that's a better question, whether it's a flash in the pan, a burst of glory, or it's a slow burn that you realize, hey, I've been walking with Jesus and Jesus has been revealing himself. We have to remember that Jesus walked with the disciples for about, they say about two and a half years before he asked them, who do you think I am? And Peter at that point says, you are the Christ. That was two and a half years into being with him and being discipled by Jesus. And so, yeah, that was, that's my Thursday thought. What, let me know what you think. Do you, do you have a road, Damascus, Damascus road ex, experience conversion, or do you have a road to Emmaus? Um, tell me your experience.